The next talk that we're going to have right now is Cloud Security Metrics, presented by Xavier Ash. Thanks, guys. If you want some metrics, I'll give you some metrics too, but uh, that's all right. So Cloud Security Myths. Uh, so I like to make sure that I'm talking to the right cl uh, cl uh, cloud uh, crowd. There we go. So um, I want to get an idea of, of what you guys do, so that I make sure that you know I give you the information you need. So who here is you know part of a SOC analyst? You guys have got to respond to cloud security crap. All right, so we got some analysts in here. All right, so engineers, people that've got to like design security for the cloud. All right, good. We got so all right. So that that's generally where the talk is going to be aimed toward is, is is those people. But we are going to talk. I've got some IR in the cloud and some other talks uh, or other things about dealing with security in the cloud. So let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit about me. Uh, I am I'm old. I've been around for a long time, um, and uh, I've, I've, I've most recently worked for Gartner. So if you see these terms that only Gartner uses, that's because they infected me with their terms. And so just just bear with me as I as I use those terms as I describe some of this stuff. Um, I've done uh, I've been in vendor world uh, consulting. Uh, did a little bit of my own business for a while, but I've recently switched gears. And uh, after getting accepted this. Time, Talk. Uh, I now do IR, so I don't do cloud security anymore. But you know, I, I do play a good one on TV. Uh, so now I do. Uh, uh, I run an incident response team for a large financial institution. Uh, so I do. So that's why I put in the, the IR and the cloud stuff to, to make sure I cover that over. All right. So so what is the cloud, right? So in general, most people talk about the cloud in these three general places, right? You've got software as a service, infrastructure as a service, and platform as a service. And there's all these, uh, that is the three types of cloud, right? And, and I'm here to say that there's, there's a lot more than that. And, uh, and so we want to make sure that we all understand when we say the cloud, what are we talking about? I want to make sure that everyone walks away knowing about especially function as a service and other serverless type of things, right? So function as a service is a big, uh, you know, uh, push, and and for those that that are, you know design security and design and and or or work in a SOC, we generally are not the ones that are going to decide. Hey, we want to go do this function as a service thing, right? That's going to be some business line, uh, some uh, IT architect, uh, some you know developing team that says, hey. Container is a service. We could, we could, uh, you know, uh, let's let's do this new container stuff. And so as we talk about, you know, there's these three types of cloud. I mean, four types. Of, well, there's actually five types of cloud services. There's, it, it keeps ever changing, right? So here's a couple more. That uh, back end as a service, especially if you're doing mobile, uh, that's that's a, a, a popular one now. You know, just just all that that other crap that you have to do. You know, the, just all the, the 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 stuff to run a mobile app is, is back end as a service. Um, integration platform as a service uh, uh, to be able to to get data from here to there. Um, a lot of, uh, started off in the sales world, and and uh, uh, if you use uh, what's uh, the uh, uh, I, uh, ITTTF, that, that's a good example. Um, unified communication service for getting, uh, getting your voice stuff. Uh, payments as a service. All these wonderful services that you might make sure <laughs> that you cover uh, when you design for security. So uh, very important. All right, so everybody know, got it down. Everybody knows what the cloud is. We're all on the same page. It's one big thing that we can talk about easily, right? Security, cloud security is just one thing. That, that's, that's, what I'm trying to drive home is that there's a lot of different things here. So let's let's kind of uh, talk about uh, how doing security is changing the cloud. One of the things that, that I like to really put into people's mind when we talk about shifting the mindset of what cloud means, we used to have this you know these designs of saying we've got this perimeter, we've got this you know system bus, and we've got this you know this architecture that really kind of starts with our data center. And that's not really the truth anymore, right? The, the truth is, is that the user, end user, is, is, the, is the center of that hub. They're going to go out to all of these different services. And, and this kind of, you know, this is a good talk, especially when, you know, uh, if, if you get into the, the tangent about uh, endpoint management. You know, a lot of big companies like to say, here's a, here's a trusted computer, right? You know, you're, a, you're a contractor. I'm going to give you a trusted computer. Therefore, I, I, I can manage that and I can, I can control everything you're doing. The problem is, is that that's not the case anymore, right? You know, we have, uh, uh, as, as the cloud kind of 
continues to, to permeate our, our business processes, this is going to be the perspective and our, and our users are going to demand being able to use whatever device they want. And so, it, you know, this is just a side tangent. This is, this is a, you know, nice change. Um, so when we talk about cloud and, and really, you know, uh, cloud security, we got to talk about who does what. And I found this great site. Uh, it's called Pizza as a Service. And, uh, you know, the link here, you can just remember Pizza as a Service and Google it and use this in, in your uh, conversations. When you're talking about what, uh, uh, who does what when it comes to these different cloud services. And so this, this uh, they, they've updated it to include containers as a service and function as a service. But you see here, uh, traditionally, when we're talking about the, uh, you know, the data center, it is, uh, you know, every, we own everything. That's kind of like, uh, you know, good old homemade pizza, right? And we're going to move to infrastructure as a service. This is, this is what most people think of when they think of cloud, uh, AWS, opening up an EC2 uh, virtual machine. They are, you're handing over the, uh, the, the responsibility for virtualization and hardware, but you still got the rest of the stuff to do, which is kind of like a, you know, communal kitchen. You show up and, uh, you know, you can just uh, use their kitchen. Uh, so, but containers as a service, is, as we move into this, uh, you know, uh, paradigm of using containers, uh, that the OS is now uh, no longer a responsibility. You're just, you know, mo moving around containers. You know, that's your, you know, bring your own pizza situation. Takeaway, when you're now uh, looking at, uh, you know, platform as a service, you just walk up, you know, take your pizza away. You go to a restaurant, you know, that's your, your functions of service. You're just showing up and you're going to get a pizza delivered. You just want that function. And then finally, the party, right? Software as a service. Everything, you just show up, there's just pizza there. And so this is a good, good way of, of uh, you know, making sure that people understand who's responsible for what. And this goes to, uh, you know, when we talk about, you know, your, your cloud security controls. Um, so I also love the word hybrid. Everybody says, yo, well, we get this hybrid cloud situation, right? We're going to do hybrid cloud. And this is as, as just as easy to describe as just the cloud, right? There's only one thing of hybrid. Hybrid is cloud versus data center. Well, you've got to make sure that you're, when you, somebody says the hybrid cloud, you say, well, well, what do you mean? Are you using the cloud as a backup uh, place, or a place to do uh, disaster recovery? Um, are you, uh, you know, doing, uh, you know, just, just using it as a storage unit? Uh, what things are you actually shipping to the cloud? And, and it, do you actually have, like, a separate data center out in the cloud, or do you really kind of extend your data center? You've got data center one that's here in my office and data, data center two that's AWS, and you can't really tell the difference, right? So hybrid cloud uh, could mean a lot of things, and we'll make sure that when you're driving, uh, you know, driving home you know, a, a conversation that you're walking away and say, you know, we, we know what we're talking about. And, and so don't just say, you know, if somebody just says, hey, you know, the cloud, you know you can, you know, dive into that, but then when they say, hey, Hybrid cloud, you say, well, what do you mean by that? And so dive into that, make sure that you know. So as we change through uh, this, this different uh, mindset of what, what stuff is in the cloud, uh, one of the things that we're driving toward is this serverless world, right? Basically, as, as uh, we got excited about not having to run our own hardware, then we said, oh, wouldn't it be great if we didn't have to run our own software and, and we can just have more and more other people do things? And so uh, as, as, as uh, you know, these cloud service providers have clued into this, they've said, oh, oh, you want to run SQL? How about SQL as a service? All right, well, that's great. That the, uh, now I don't even have to work. I can do auto-scaling on one, I have one database, and it can just auto-scale on its own, and I don't have to worry about, you know, actually creating containers or doing anything. That, I just have a SQL database or an elastic search, you know, and, and it's just this thing that you can call, and it expands, and it is really easy to use. Problem is, is that without a server, there's a whole lot of things that break down when it comes down to security. As we move into the cloud, uh, that is the biggest uh, the, uh, you know, gap that we have. As you walk away from this talk, I want you to understand is that as we move to the serverless world, what things are not going to work? So I went around yes, uh, yesterday, the day before, at, uh, I went to Black Hat and uh, talked to everybody that had the word cloud. On their on their banner, which was just about everyone, right? Everyone does cloud, right? you know, security in the cloud, you know, secure your cloud, best security in the cloud. I said, well, you know, how did your thing work? <coughs> and I said, well, we do this thing, and then we install an agent. I said, oh, you install an agent, that's great. 
what do I do with, with, with serverless options? If I've got an elastic search stack, uh, how do you protect that? Well, I, uh, exactly. So be sure to take, to take away from this is that, you know, that to understand that these serverless options are going to continue to pop up. And so as your company, as your organization moves into the cloud, it is not just going to be infrastructure as a service. You, and, unless, you know, you want to put these uh, training wheels on your, you know, your, your enterprise development and say, hey, we're not going to innovate. These, these, these uh, services are so easy to use and really accelerate uh, you know, time to deliver on security that, uh, or time to deliver on, on business processes that they're going to happen. So we, you know, as security guys, we can't say, well, we can't put an agent on that, so you can't do that. Right? And, and, and the more we act like that, the more we're going to get kicked out of the boardroom. We, we have to uh, be able to do security in the cloud and not say, here's what you can and can't do. All right, so what do I mean by security in the cloud? Well, so here is a, just a you know, quick list of the you know, NIST control family so we can remind ourselves there's a lot of things that we, you know, as, as security teams we're responsible for, right? And so as we you know, think back of our you know, pizza as a service slide, right? And so there's a couple of these that we can go ahead and strike off. As soon as we do infrastructure as a service, right, the baseline just put, put some VMs in the cloud, we no longer have to deal with personnel security, physical and environment protection, right? We, we need to make sure our cloud service providers are doing those, right? And if you do SOC 2, right, you have to make sure your, your providers are doing those. But you're handing off the responsibility. So it doesn't, doesn't you know, eliminate the need to do these, it's just somebody else is doing these. And so uh, uh, with both NIST and, and um, a couple of others, your cloud service providers, lots of big ones, uh, for example, have got uh, you know, great spreadsheets to go through and say, here are the controls and what you do, what you, we do, and, and, and how to figure all that out. But generally, those, meet, those really assume infrastructure as a service. And so you have to say, all right, if I'm going to have uh, some Lambda functions out there that is going to be connecting, how do I authenticate to that? How do I make sure that that works? As that scales up and I have an incident on one of those nodes, how am I going to respond to that? All right, so another way of making sure that we understand when we say cloud security, there's really th you know, three kind of groupings that I usually say. Are, are, are we talking about like s services, you know, or so cloud security, security as a service, you know, security things that are happening, you know, in the cloud? You know, uh, things like Proofpoint, you know, you send your email through their cloud, right? So that's just kind of like security as a service. So that's, that's one kind of thing when you talk about cloud security. There's, there's cloud security products, right? So you're, <coughs> your virtual firewalls, your, your, your DLP things, you know, like virtual uh, appliances that you're going to be putting in your, your cloud. So those are products in the cloud. And then there's, uh, you know, for the cloud, right? And, and a lot of these are going to be run by the cloud service provider. You're probably going to use Azure or, or, or AWS's uh, IAM, but there's, there's also a third party one of those. So, so make sure that when, you know, again, we say cloud security, what are we talking about? Are we talking about, uh, you know, uh, cloud security services, uh, uh, products in the cloud, or, or functions in the cloud. Now, generally, as, as I dive in here, I'm going to look mainly at the products in the cloud because uh, that's where a lot of the gaps tend to tend happen. Is 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 and so uh, so let's let's kind of dig in here. So I did label this talk cloud security myths. So here we go. Here's some good security myths. I love this. I googled around and said, all right, so let, let, I'm going to talk about cloud security myths. What are cloud security myths? I know they're all over the place. But in general, I felt like these were myths that you would talk to non-security folks about. All right, so the cloud is not secure. We can't go to the cloud. Now, as, as a consultant, I actually talked with a couple of companies that still, to this day, 2018, said, well, I can't trust my data in the cloud. These guys were not doing government super secret stuff. I, honestly, one of them was a cigarette maker. I mean, you, you, we know how to make cigarettes. It's not secret sauce and you, you're, not, you're gonna be okay by putting your data in the cloud. They still did not want to make that, that move to say, okay, we can think about maybe doing some cloud, but we're not gonna put any of our you know, uh, uh, classified data in there. So that's one myth. Data, data, you know, so yes, we hear all the time about you know, data breaches in the cloud. This was found in the cloud. You know, that's not the cloud service provider. When's the last time you heard Amazon hacked? You know, they jumped from one, uh, you know, one uh, AWS or uh, uh, instance to another, right? Or, or uh, to, uh, across across. That doesn't happen, right? So, so the you know, likelihood of that happening is really low. 
So the cloud is actually really secure. I love this other one. The cloud is perfectly secure. Well, no. You know, so it is as secure as you make it. You put up data there and you leave it out in the open, somebody's going to find it, right? You, put, you load your uh, AWS keys in your GitHub, yes, somebody's going to find it. So, so the cloud is only secure as you want to make it. There's a cloud security is too complex to maintain. This one I kind of say yes. <laughs> and here's why. All right, so the complexity to cloud security, and this is what this is the, 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 the meat of the talk, is, is that all of these controls, you know, that, that big list of family of controls, we've got to design all these different controls. We've got IAM, we've got uh, you know, data protection, we've got you know, all these things. I've got to be able to figure out how can I convert that control to all of these different services, right? We've got, you know, function of service, you know, services options. How can I do that? And every week or so, somebody's going to say, okay, but now AWS has got this new thing and it's awesome. It's going to revolutionize the thing. We're going to do it in six months. So security, you're going to have to get on board with how we're going to do this. And so, yes, there is a lot of complexity. It can be done, but we have to, to, to understand that, uh, you know, you've got to be able to communicate risk to these people. Yes, you can do that in six months. You can do that in six weeks. But you're going to do it in, you know, it's going to be a much riskier situation because we're not going to have all of our controls converted for this new, thing, new fandangled technology. All right. So all cloud service providers are the same. I'm going to jump to that in a minute. Um, and then uh, on-premise services are so much safer. I, I love this one because, yeah, um, we all know how poor our security is at our own data centers, right? So let's, let's just not even go there. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, my, oh, my God, cloud. All right. All right. So cloud security truths. You've got to get away from this perimeter thinking. Now, there is, I am going to talk about like a, a transient VPCs and how to set that up. And, and so there is going to be uh, some aspect of, you know, building kind of a perimeter into your cloud. Uh, but it's, 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 it's because... There's really two ways of doing things. Well, th sorry, there's three ways of doing things in the cloud. There is agents, there is APIs, and there is network-based stuff. And so, really, you've got to you got to make sure your solutions will fit one of those uh, one of those three. So, you can so with 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 network-based stuff, we're going to create some some transit uh, VPCs to so make sure that we can get uh, uh, the the network traffic to go through our network uh, products. Distributed threat surface. Think about, you know, if, if you're going to try to protect all of your company's data and they start using the ERP as a service, sales, you know, Salesforce, what, there's data up there and there's all of these different areas where now you've got to, you know, apply all these controls and be able to keep that safe. So there's a distributed threat service. You will need new tools or, you, you know, get tools, you know, the, the, Make sure that the tools you've got are, are starting to get updated and become more cloud aware, become container aware, become more aware of, of what you're doing in the environment. Um, lots of new policies and procedures because you know just go look back and read it and think about all right if I'm you know moving from you know from data center to a cloud, uh, what am I going to have to rewrite? So um, so I, yeah I already said that you know it takes a long time to convert those controls. All right so <coughs> some cloud services are more equal than others, right? So this is a recent Gartner study. Uh, they looked at, uh, you know, took all, uh, a, a, a large majority of the uh, NIST controls and uh, said, hey, um, uh, except for IAM, they did, we did another study on that, but uh, is, 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 is how much, if I just go with what Amazon or Google or Azure gives me out of the box, how, how well am I covered? And it's really interesting how, you know, there's so many gaps on, on the Google side. And, and, and it's, 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 I, I always think about like, uh, you know, here's, here's the uh, perfect little cloud thing that already works for you but has fewer options. And then Google says, here's just this basic platform to do some creative things. And so Google just kind of takes a different approach to it. While both Azure and AWS are trying to say, I want to give you all the tools so that you don't have to go to anybody else. We have everything for you. But there are gaps there. And the gaps there, you need to be able to identify, uh, and 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 this is just and and this kind of simplifies the view to say, oh well, are we again? Are we just talking about EC2 VMs, or are, do do I can I have the same level of logging if I just have a, a virtual or a uh, um, elastic stack? All right. So so let's make sure that uh, you know as you do your own analysis here, that you understand. 
and, and look at the options that, that your, your development team haven't, haven't even used yet. If they're, if they're not doing functions as a service within the next year, you're, there's going to be a Lambda function out there doing something and all of a sudden it's going to be mission critical. So go ahead and, 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 and think about all those things and, and be able to do this analysis for your own, uh, for your own uh, company and your own situation. All right. So I wanted I added this uh, this big search. You know, if, if you have a Gartner, you know, uh, pass, you can get on and you look at the full study here. Here are some of the highlights that that I thought I would call out. Um, <coughs> so Amazon Guard 2D, great product. Um, it does have a region specific thing. So if you guys that actually are working in the cloud using uh, Guard Duty as your uh, uh, your sim. If you have multiple regions, just know it's not doing cross-region correlation. So if you do have multiple regions in AWS, you want to make sure that you're using, uh, you either assume that risk or use another sim to do your, your, uh, do, do your alerting. So that's a good takeaway. Um, I, I, I love finding out that Google's OEM, uh, they have the, uh, the um, uh, it, it's, it's actually semantic under the hood. They, they call it the, the, the Google uh, workload protection. It, it's just semantic. And so if you have opinions about semantic, there you go. They're just giving you more information to, go, uh, to do something with. Um, so Google does not support transit VPC. So as I said, there's really three, three ways of doing security. It's, it's, it's either, you know, have an agent on, on, on a box, which we know that has a limitation. APIs, which of course has limitations because every, not every API gives you all the same access, uh, and or a network. And so if you're going to be doing network-based stuff, and, and I, I, I say that you probably need to do network-based stuff from IR and, and, and in, you know, being able to, to, to do things on the wire, uh, you know, Google does not support transit v, uh, VPCs. So keep that in mind as, as you're looking at these. And, and of course, there's more cloud service providers than, than, than just these. But we had to, you know, stop somewhere. <coughs> um, so uh, if you know anything about, uh, you know, denial service uh, protection, um, Google's is kind of like old school, you know, if they're going to just flood you with data, then uh, they've got protection. Um, however, there's, technology, there's a, a method called scrubbing. We'll get into it right now, but that's uh, a lot of the more modern uh, denial service attacks uh, uh, are mitigated using scrubbing. Uh, that is a, uh, a premium add-on for Azure and um, AWS, but uh, Google does not have that at all. So again, you know, when you think about which services to put in which uh, uh, cloud service provider, that might uh, uh, move, it, move you one way or the other. Um, so the, the um, uh, if you're applying, you know, the the, uh, the WAF on on the uh, on AWS, uh, that that you really can only use it on their on those two uh, either on CloudFront or the lo their load balancer. So uh, there's other third-party products. I know F5 and a couple of others are, are really kind of you know uh, looking to cover that gap, but uh, the the WAF uh, has got a lot of limitations in the uh, the out-of-the-box capabilities for for AWS. Um, Azure get, does provide endpoint security. Well, I think that it's interesting. AWS doesn't even uh, uh, rebrand anything, so uh, so Azure does have that. Um, I would uh, encourage you to look at what what's available out there for uh, for cloud-based uh, endpoint security for those instances in which you can actually put an agent. Um, and then Stack Driver. So the both uh, AWS and, and and Google have um, or AWS and, and Azure have a great logging tools. Um, a stack driver takes it a little bit further and it can does, does some like debug level stuff, which is great if you want to also do, do some IR. Um, uh, but what I thought was interesting is that um, stack driver can be used on AWS. Uh, and, and so if you've got both Google and AWS, look at stack driver to maybe consolidate logging and get a, get a, get, get a couple more features. All right. So transit VPCs. So, uh, make sure that uh, everybody walks away with this is a technique that is definitely, you know, kind of required to implement a lot of the, you know, uh, cloud security that you see over at Red Hat, you know, when they say, hey, we can do these wonderful things. If it is a network-based uh, approach, you're going to need to build a transit VPC. And, and this just basically means that I've got to run my network traffic through a VPC uh, to be able to, to, to get this stuff done. So this is just a, a basic architecture approach, uh, but is, is overlooked by a lot of architects and realizing, oh, 
uh, well, we're going to have to do this other thing. And so, uh, uh, especially when, when if, if you're moving the cloud and get this in place uh, beforehand, if not, look to go talk to your network engineers and look at uh, implementing this so you can do things like uh, you know packet capture, uh, IP, IPS, and other things on the wire. Right. All right, so now I'll get into some of these, those, like I said, this is some of the Gartner terms, so excuse me. Uh, so cloud workload protection platforms. All right, so uh, th this is a really big long word for endpoint security in the cloud. All right, so, uh, but uh, in, in a lot of these products I looked at were just the same, you know, EDR or, or antivirus product, uh, just, they just put the word cloud on it. So what I want to do is, is if you are going to look at uh, and, and you should, if, if, if you don't have already, is, is to look at uh, these endpoint based solutions. Here's what you need to make sure that they have, all right? So both agent list and uh, agent based operations, okay? So most of these are going to be agent based to begin with, but see which ones can tap into, uh, you know, uh, APIs either at the, at the uh, hypervisor, uh, at the cloud, and, and, and decide what type of uh, functionality is, is, is useful so uh, that you can get that, uh, you know, threat protection, the threat detection and protection coverage on those uh, serverless options. All right? Protection of containers. You've got to make sure that even if you're not using containers today, you will be soon. So make sure that your uh, endpoint protection is container aware. Um, so tagging and segmenting. So I've got, I've got another slide on micro segmentation, but that, you know, being able to understand the traffic coming out of each container from a different instance, you know, and, and with all the auto scaling, everything else, you need to be able to describe the data in very finite ways and make sure that if you are looking at uh, or already doing, you know, traffic tagging and, and security groups that your endpoint security uh, solution works with those and can help, ta uh, uh, you know, if you've already done the job of describing, here's all of my, you know, uh, enterprise bus traffic, you know, uh, you know I built this great, uh, you know, uh, APS um, uh, security group and I can identify those, I've done all the, uh, the microservices uh, tagging and then you go and install this product and it, uh, it can't see those tags, it can't work with them, so you can't really write rules to, to based off of that other work. So this is one is where, you know, uh, the, the enterprise architects are going to be building this kind of technology in. You want to make sure that your security products can leverage it. Um, so native API uh, based integration, especially if you're, gonna, if you're multiple cloud providers, uh, you need to look at, you know, can I integrate, you know, have one, one uh, uh, console for both my Google and my uh, AWS cloud. Uh, that, that, that saves a whole lot of uh, you know, pain and effort. So if you do have a multi-cloud integration, make sure that you can do that. And um, uh, you know, traditional antivirus, really not a big deal on servers. However, application control, whitelisting, this, uh, you know, used to work for Bit9, so I love this stuff. But I, I think that that's a, a very key feature as well. So th this is your, your shopping list if you're going to go look for the, this wonderful world of cloud workload protection platforms, i.e. import security. All right, next uh, category of, you know, miraculous solutions is the CASB. All right, so who here has even tried to use CASBs out in the field? Anybody? I got a couple hands over here, a couple hands, all right. CASBs tend to have gotten a, a, a kind of a bad rap because I, yeah, I, I did, you know, back when I was doing consulting, I asked, so what about CASBs? And they're like, oh, uh, CASBs. Uh, they're, they're, they're 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 too pain. They're they're for for this size company. We're too big for them. Or you know they they're too complicated. And they can be. So Casby's in general was uh, the, uh, is this group of products that says I need to put something uh, in between my user and my typically SaaS providers to uh, do additional stuff. So when we talk about converting controls over to the serverless world, there's also all these, you know, software as a service providers. And I want to do things like, you know, uh, authentication. Well, yes, you can go and do, you know, they've got, you know, Centrify and all these others now can, can really help you with that. But the, the CASB products kind of do a, a, a more than that. can allow you to do, uh, can, can, can add on additional uh, encryption, can, uh, you know, do some encapsulation, uh, uh, do adaptive access control. I've got a couple of features here. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've got, and, and there's multiple architectures on the way that these work, and I've got that on my next slide. Um, 
But one of the main features is, you know, shadow IT. So you can kind of go start getting a hold of these other uh, products. So, of course, yes, if you've got, you know, proxy logs, you, your, your Splunk could probably figure out who's using these other, you know, shadow IT products. So I wouldn't go, if that's your only use case, I wouldn't go out and buy a CASB just for that. But you can then apply, start applying some of your security controls to those, uh, those products in, in, a, in a CASB product. Um, and so uh, you can, you know, like I said, apply those to your sanction SAS, um, and then also be able to uh, apply those to any of the um, uh, unsanctioned SAS that you come up and, and you can start onboarding those. But how do they work? So there's generally uh, like uh, usually three, uh, four is, is there as well. So there's uh, API mode is out of band. So basically, in uh, you know, some CASBs, they just say, I'm going to talk to the SaaS provider and I'm going to tell it it's got an API there and they know you're coming from you know, company X and we're going to apply all these controls for you because we have this native integration. So this is API mode and, and a lot of the big uh, SaaS providers work with a lot of the CASBs out of the box and can apply your security controls without necessarily doing a man in the middle. The man, the two man in the middle. The there's a forward proxy mode or reverse proxy mode. Won't necessarily get into the technical dif differences there, but you know you can understand that the other way of doing this is you've got to basically put yourself in the middle and then uh, broker those uh, communications so that you can apply those security controls like authentication, encryption, and whatnot. And then there's enterprise integration, which is a you know, complex word of saying that I've got s all these other little products that are gonna, I can tap into and, uh, and, and provide the same CASB level services. So again, I, went, well, I was going around to all these uh, 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 providers yesterday or uh, uh, vendors yesterday and, and asking about them. So and they describe how you're doing. So, oh, so you're kind of like a CASB, right? And like, well, I'm not really a CASB. We, we, ours is so much different, right? So it's like, no, you're, you're a CASB. So, um, uh, so this is uh, uh, one of these product solutions that, in general, I do think that most CASBs is still a fairly new uh, set of technologies. And if you're a large enterprise, probably uh, uh, not going to you know, be able to, to meet all of your demands. Just about, you know, there, pro there might be now some of the Casby products have started to like put a, little more, a lot more enterprise features, but they, this is a good uh, mid-market program. If you've got, uh, uh, if, if, if you've got a very small data center or no data center and your uh, company runs a whole lot of different SaaS products, I would look at uh, looking at, at some of these to help fulfill some of your security needs. Uh, like I said, this is one of these network-based solutions um, uh, that uh, can, can apply security controls for SaaS and other security, uh, other cloud service uh, uh, technologies uh, without necessarily having to, you know, manage the full agent. All right, so everyone's heard all about the, you know, I've got this breach, people left out data over this. So, so this is a, a, a mandatory thing, is to make sure that you understand how you're doing ongoing cloud security posture management. You know, Gartner used to call this uh, cloud infrastructure security posture assessment, CISPA, but then, you know, the Congress decided to create a really bad law, a law called CISPA, and now you don't want to call things CISPA because everybody gets all fussy and says, EFF! No, no, not that system. Yeah, okay, so we're going to call it cloud security posture management now. Um, and so, uh, if you only have, you're only doing things in one, you know, AWS or just just uh, Azure, uh, they do. Each of the products do have their own like you know checklist toolkit. Um, however, this is one of those areas I think that defense in depth is probably warranted, right? If you're you're having the cloud service provider tell you that everything's okay. And in general, that might be good enough for you, but uh, if, if you think that you need a little bit more, there are third-party products, there's open source, uh, was it Cloud Sploit, I think is one of these. There's a lot of good, uh, let's see here, right? yeah, I wrote down to Cloud Scout 2, Crowl, uh, Prowler, Security Monkey, Cloud Custodian, and Cloud Sploit. So yeah, just look out there for those type of solutions, and what they'll do is you know, look to see how you've got things set up, and, and constantly tell you, hey, yep, you've got an open EC2 bucket, right? You know, that's, that's the kind of things we want to avoid. And so this is, uh, this is, this is your, your security blanket. Make sure that nobody over there that has uh, the permissions to do so does something stupid, and uh, you can immediately respond to it. Um, so mandatory tool in your uh, cloud security toolkit. All right. 
Software defined perimeter. Anybody know what this one is? Oh, I got one. One. <laughs> All right, so software defined perimeter. I, I really like this because I worked for a startup and this is kind of what we did. We didn't call it this because we wanted to be cool. We wanted to call it micro segmentation because, you know, uh, NGX was talking all about micro segmentation. We're like, we can do so much better. But this is basically the type of solution that says, I'm going to put, is, and is, everyone that I've seen so far is agent based. Some of, I, I think some, might ha some may have APIs. But the idea is, I got an agent on one side, I got an agent on the other, and there's a broker in the middle. And based off of different situations, I can do different things in that, uh, the, with that situation. So if I've got an agent on the endpoint, I can actually stop network traffic from getting to, like, through the IP stack based off of this broker's decision. So for example, you know, you're, 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 you can do authentication before the, the TCP session is even established. So you can make things disappear. So that's why I call it software defined perimeters. I can put a server on the internet and, and it says uh, I've got, you know, uh, uh, I'm only going to allow, you know, other endpoints that have this other agent because I've got this third party uh, broker that's going to say I'm coming in as authenticated, this IP over here, he's good to go, you can allow, you can open up a TCP session for him. All these other ones, you're just going to drop the TCP session. So I, th I think it's a really neat way of doing security. Uh, uh, there's, uh, you can also do things like add uh, encryption and encapsulation. Uh, but, and, and again, uh, and you can look at this for east-west traffic as well. It doesn't have to be client server uh, that you can do this in the, in the data center. Um, again, most of this is agent based, uh, but it provides some, some really interesting security. You can make, make, uh, make machines hide off the, off the network. Um, um, unless uh, you're, you're part of this, this brokerage solution. So, really neat tools there. All right, um, about time. Micro segmentation. So, uh, you know, no cloud talk is good without micro segmentation. Like I said, worked in this, uh, this uh, for a couple of years. Uh, so, micro segmentation, uh, I, this, is, this is my definition here because that to help, uh, help write the, a lot of this. And so uh, it's, it's basically saying I want to make a decision on whether traffic is allowed to flow based off of something more than just IP and port. Right? So, uh, so I can say I, uh, this is coming from these set of servers and it's coming from these sets of services so I know that this data is LDAP, right? And I don't need to know, I don't need to do uh, uh, protocol uh, inspection or anything like that. I can just go ahead and say yes. I can identify this, I can tag it, and then I can link this in with my networking solution to then uh, provide, uh, you know, this, this, uh, uh, a lot of east-west control on making sure that only traffic that should go where it goes, goes, right? So uh, micro-segmentation is being built in a lot of uh, software-defined networking products. Um, it's uh, obviously available, you know, so, uh, you know the NGX product uh, from, from VMware, and, uh, uh, and, and I'm seeing a lot of enterprises start to actually push out um, uh, you know, endpoints, uh, endpoint agents, and 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 start participating in their entire company in doing micro segmentation. Most of the you know, and, and so the, the architectures there, native micro segmentation is um, you know in the cloud or with uh, you know VMware. Third party model is I've got some other product that is going to come in and do it for me, um, and then the overlay model is 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 the agent based model uh, like uh, Illumio. And then the hybrid model is using some combination thereof, right? So in cloud, you've got micro segmentation natively, right? So if you're doing any micro segmentation on your in your data center, you can carry that over to the cloud. And you should, and and and, and make sure that that your your ta your, your you know if you're using NGX that the, they, the the tags carry over, and you can you can create an enterprise wide micro segmentation scheme. Uh, a lot of people get worried about the micro segmentation. I've got uh, I did, oh I didn't put that graphic in. You know it's, I've got complex city, you know, I've got VLANs were hard, but now you're talking about micro segmentation, there you're talking about thousands of different, you know, so a lot of people, I, I've, I've seen enterprises call this macro segmentation. No, we're, we're not going to do it this much. We're just going to simplify it, do macro segmentation. Either way, um, uh, it's, it's, it is a, a very strong control that you should look at in, in when you're designing uh, your networks, your uh, cloud solutions, because when you look at the number of controls and you look at a lot of the serverless options, sometimes you're just going to have to segment that stuff off, right? I can't put an agent on it. It's encrypted traffic. 
I've, you know, I've covered my bases, so I've got authenticated connections, but I can't do anything else with it. So how can I secure that, you know, my data layer in the cloud? So you can do some microsegmentation, make sure that only your, the approved services can connect to that. Uh, and, and, uh, and really you have to do microsegmentation when you're talking about auto scaling and a lot of the, you know, dynamicness of the cloud, so. All right. So uh, it's in response to the cloud. So we'll talk a little bit about how we can now make, uh, you know, so now something bad has happened, right? So one, you have to plan for IR in the cloud. So of course a lot of this is logging, but logging is, is always not uh, enough. Um, but when you are doing logging, I would look at things like uh, write once storage, all right? So S3 bucket, uh, S3 bucket versioning is a good way of making sure that as you put your logs in that they're, 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 uh, they're immutable. Um, and then also, you know, Index all of your SaaS services. All right? if, if, if something bad were to happen, I know that we kind of laugh about, oh, those are the sales guys using Salesforce. What do they really need instant response for? Oh, I lost my contacts. I'm sorry, if you sales guys, your sales team loses a whole bunch of stuff, trust me, that's going to be a big IR situation because the sales guys, you know, a lot of companies, uh, the sales guys run the company, right? And so if they can't sell stuff, nobody's getting paid, so we got to go, you know, it's a big deal. So go talk to your SaaS providers and figure out what can I get access, what can, how can I get, make sure my IR team can get in, get the data it needs, get the, get the uh, uh, you know, whatever, uh, you know, logs, whatever uh, um, uh, different, uh, you know, captures that I can get, um, you know, plan for that stuff. You know, and this is also where, you know, you might look at it and say, hey, I think I might want to look at CASBs now because now with CASBs I can start doing, uh, you know, capturing some of that network data. Right, so if, if I you know if, uh, don't have net witness on every single thing, I can at least start you know capturing those, and so I can uh, uh, figure out uh, how to respond uh, for my uh, software as a service providers. Um, note that all of your cloud service providers they have their own IR process, and if there was a situation, if there's a data center on fire, they're gonna they're gonna let you know. So if you're you know part of IR, part of the SOC. Make sure that you, one, you've indexed all of your cloud services, you know where they are, and two, that you know what their IR program is. Now, if you're mature enough to be able to sit there and pull SOC 2 reports, that's great, but, you know, to go and, you know, Microsoft and uh, Amazon, they all have really good, you know, explanations on how their IR process. So, so just remember, because there's different levels of responsibility, that IR process might be kicked off by your actual cloud service provider. So just make sure you have that in your mind. Um, so a, a couple of tips here. Uh, so EC2, we can actually, you know, if you've actually got, you know, VMs there, you can do a snapshot capture uh, in EBS. Uh, uh, Azure, you can actually, you know, if you've got, you know, IIS OS, you can just capture the um, uh, data drive directly in the portal. Um, Margarita Shotgun, great little tool for doing memory uh, uh, captures, especially in the cloud. Um, and, and if you're on AWS, there's this great combination of toolkits called the Open Source Incident Response Toolkit. Uh, it's got a, a number of different uh, tools packaged together, uh, and, and that way you can actually start up, you know, have an IR uh, uh, station in your cloud, so that you know when you go to, to to you know capture something, you can go ahead and just mount it on your IR instance, and 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 you can go and and start working away. So again. IR is not, you know, waiting until it happens to put all this together, right? So build all that out. Um, and that um, in the security center, uh, Azure's got a pretty good, uh, you know, playbook-based uh, uh, system in its uh, security center that can help uh, uh, a lot of the IR automations. And of course, if you've got something like Demisto, whatnot, they all kind of tie into those. So again, just like with the enterprise or the endpoint security stuff, if you're doing uh, automations uh, like Rainbow Tables just showed us, uh, you know, make sure that they can connect to your, um, to your cloud. So again, the takeaway here is that, you know, there is lots of different things in the cloud, there will continue to be lots of different things in the cloud, and we have lots of different security controls that we have to continue to do. It's very hard to keep up with that, and so we gotta make sure that we index as much as we can and we can, we can communicate those gaps. And also, you know, so that you can talk intelligently to, uh, to vendors and, and they say, hey, you know, this great, beautiful thing that, that, you know, here's what it can do. I'm like, right, but how does it work? 
because that's going to uh, it's going to to tell you what kind of coverage you have. So I appreciate your time uh, for coming out. And uh, if anybody has any questions, I can take a few now. Otherwise, uh, I'll be around in the back to to talk a little bit further. So uh, any questions? I answered them all. Great. Well, I appreciate you guys coming out. Have a good uh, DEF CON. <laughs>